Hey, what's up guys? This is Marseille, the property pastor, and I want to show you today how to structure a rooming house lease. So I get this question a lot on the channel, so I wanna to talk today about how to actually structure that lease so that you and your tenants are on the same page in terms of rent amount, terms of the lease agreement, the rules and regulations of the property, lockout fees, late fees, all sorts of things. So we're gonna dig into that. So I believe that one of the biggest mistakes that you can make with any rental property is to not have a properly set up lease. Now you can go down to your big box store, Office Max, and buy one of those one page leases. But the unfortunate part about it is they really don't contain a whole lot. And some of them aren't worth more than the paper that they're written on. They won't hold up in court. They don't really spell out the specifics that you need for your property. And they may not even be written specifically for your state. Hey, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the kingdom legacy movement where we are building a legacy for our children and our children's children you know my mission is to help to not only build your finances but also to build your faith you know god has blessed me to build a portfolio over the past few years and i want to bring that knowledge to you i want to answer your questions i want to give you valuable information and resources and add value to you and your business so that you can build that legacy for your children and your children's children and then also make sure you hit that like button because by hitting that like button this video will be available to more and more people. So we wanna get the message out to as many people as possible to show everyday folks that this is all possible. And we're gonna jump into some amazing content today. So let's go ahead and get started. And I will also be including a link to a free lease agreement that you can use to structure your room and house lease. You can build upon it, you can, you can cater it to your specific state, to your specific business. You can change it, edit it, all that kind of stuff. But at the very end of the video, I will be including a link so that you can take advantage of that great resource absolutely free. So a little bit of housekeeping before I jump into the content of the lease. I've gotta let you guys know that this, this information does not constitute legal advice. It is for informational and educational purposes only. I encourage you to consult a lawyer in your local state, or your local city and county to get the specific information about where you live, about the laws and regulations uh, but this information is only for informational and educational purposes. So don't sue me if the lease doesn't work for you. This is just a resource for you so that you can build your own lease and it can help you in your business. A lease is defined as a legally binding contract that outlines the terms of both parties. That's going to be the landlord and the tenant. One of the most fearful parts about being a landlord is when that tenant either stops paying rent or they start tearing things up, they start damaging the property. And the very first thing that you need to reference is your lease agreement. Now, in my business, I have had the unfortunate experience of evicting tenants. Now, as a landlord, as a real estate investor, it's really not a matter of if you will have an eviction, it's a matter of when. Now, the lease agreement is very important because if you ever have to evict a tenant, if you have to if you have a discrepancy in terms of the way they're treating their property, in terms of their relationship with other tenants, in terms of late payments, all of those things that can, can and will come up, that lease is your legally binding contract that spells out specifically what both the landlord and the tenant are legally obliged to do. So I wanna start with some of the things that I include in my leases. Some of these terms are gonna be general, but then we're gonna get into the specifics of what you wanna make sure you have in every one of your lease agreements for room and houses. The very first thing we include are the terms of the lease. That's gonna include things like when the lease agreement starts, when it ends, the terms of it, if it's gonna be month to month, three months, six months, or up to a year. Now, in my lease agreements, I typically include a clause that says at the conclusion of the lease, if a new lease is not signed, then the tenant automatically goes on a month to month agreement. That's very important because as a, if you self-manage a property and you forget to sign that lease for a month or two months, so on and so forth, you could end up without a, having a lease agreement in place because it's essentially expired. So it is important that you put a clause in there in the event that you forget to have the lease re renewed or something of that effect that is going to default to a month to month lease. Now, some investors also rent rooms by the week and there are some benefits to that. So if you, if you want to rent by the week, you wanna make sure that's included in your lease term. Now, renting by the week has some advantages and some disadvantages. One of the advantages is that it's typically easier to evict with a weekly uh, term, but the other drawback is that the type of tenant that you will attract and the rent collection will be can be tr challenging with this type of agreement. So I typically stay away from week, week to week rentals 
But if you decide to do week to week rentals, you need to include that in your lease terms. The next thing you want to include are the financial or the cost information. That's going to include the rental amount, the security deposit, the date that the rent is due. And one other thing that is also very important to include with the rental amount is a clause that states that at the end of the lease agreement or at the end of the year, the lease will autom the lease amount or the rent amount will automatically increase by some predetermined number or percentage. I typically like to include something like 3% or 5% because that way the tenant understands and knows that the longer they stay, the rent is automatically going to go up. This is a mistake I see a lot of landlords make is that they are afraid to increase the rent. Well, if you include that upfront of your lease then that tenant automatically knows after the first year, their rent is going to go up by three to 5%. So you've already calculated your cost of living. You've already calculated increases that you want to build into your business. Another area that is critical is late fees. Now, some landlords don't like to charge late fees, but I think it's absolutely important because if you don't charge late fees, you're typically going to be chasing checks every single month. So late fees are important because in doing so, that tenant understands that I have to pay my rent on time. So for my late fees, I typically charge $35 on the sixth day of the month. So I include a five day grace period so on the sixth of the month, that tenant is automatically charged $35 as a late fee. On top of that, I also charge $2 per day above and beyond that. So as you continue to go on in the month, there are $2 additional that are, are tacked on. Now you wanna be careful in this area because you want to make sure that whatever your late fees are, they comply with your local landlord tenant act. So you wanna look up your state's landlord tenant act and make sure whatever late fees that you're charging are not excessive but that needs to be spelled out clearly in your lease agreement. Another critical area is going to be charges for lost keys or lockouts. So if you've got to replace keys for a tenant, they need to pay for that. Or if that tenant loses their keys and you or your landlord has to go out there and actually let them into the property, that's time and energy and frustration and you need to charge that tenant for those things. But you want to spell out clearly what that is. And my lease is typically about $75 per occurrence for either lost key or a lockout. And what you find is after a few times of doing that, that tenant does a much better job of keeping up with those keys. The next area I wanna cover is the rules of the property. And this is so important because this is gonna tell the tenant what they can and cannot do while they're living on the premises. One thing that's very unique about a rooming house is that you have multiple individuals living in a shared space. So they have their individual bedroom and there's common areas throughout the property that if there are not rules set in, in place, Damage can occur to the property. Tenants can harass one another. They can get in fights. They can curse each other out. They can throw wild parties. Just a whole host of issues that you can run into with your tenants. So this area of rules is really important to include in your lease agreement. One of the really important areas under the, the rule section of the lease involves weapons, smoking, drug use, and alcohol. So I clearly state in my leases that there is absolutely no excessive drinking, uh, no illegal drug use on the premises, no public disturbances, public intoxication, physical abuse towards other tenants or verbal abuse, unauthorized pets, firearms, and smoking are all prohibited on the premises. You really don't wanna have smokers inside your room and house because they're gonna stain the carpet, they're gonna stain the walls, and everybody in the room and house is probably not gonna be a smoker. So I typically include in my leases that they can't smoke within 25 feet of the building. Another area I include is car repair. So if a car repair can't be accomplished within a single day, it's prohibited. And also there are no inoperable or non-working cars allowed to be parked in the yard. That's just a total eyesore and it's a blight to the neighborhood. And what you're gonna find is if your rooming house has you know, broken down cars all throughout the yard, your neighbors are gonna complain, they're gonna be calling the city on you, and it's just gonna bring a whole lot of unwanted attention that you really don't want or need in your business. Another critical area for rooming houses is quiet enjoyment. What that means is that after certain hours, people need to be mindful of one another, Typically that, that will be until 10 p.m. So people can't have loud music playing. They can't have a party. They can't be making all sorts of noise that's gonna disturb other tenants. So they've got to be mindful of one another. The other area in regards to the rules section is in regards to cleanliness. So we do require that the common areas be cleaned by the tenants and the bathrooms. And typically what you find is that if you clearly state that these areas must be clean, 
and we'll even put in a, a clause in that says if errors are not maintained that we will ultimately go and pay for someone to clean the property but that will be charged back to the tenants and then ultimately the tenants begin to police themselves now they may complain about one another but ultimately they understand that it's their responsibility to keep those areas clean the last area under rules that i really want to call out is repairs so any repairs or damage that is caused by a tenant is going to be the responsibility of that tenant. If they pour grease down the sink, then we're gonna charge that back to the tenants. If they get mad and upset and punch a hole in the wall, we're gonna charge that back down back to the tenants. But it's important that you state that because if you don't state that, they may, st they may try to say that you're responsible for it. So you wanna spell these things out specifically in your lease. Now, most of the topics I've covered so far are pretty general and they can apply to just about any lease agreement. But I wanna talk about a few specific differences that I include in my rooming house leases that I believe are gonna help you as you set yours up. The very first one that we make sure we call out is the area of utilities. So in a rooming house, the, the landlord pays for utilities. We will specifically state in our lease agreement that the landlord is covering utilities, things like electric, things like water, things like gas, sewer, and trash collection are specifically called out in our rooming house leases. Now for the common areas, we did cover a rule, a rule section earlier in the video, but some of the specific things that we also call out that applies only to rooming houses, as I mentioned earlier, the tenants are responsible for cleaning the kitchens and the bathrooms. In addition, the lease agreement needs to state that the owner is not responsible for any personal property that is lost, damaged, or stolen in those common areas. So for example, if a tenant leaves out a personal item on a sofa and then it, and it turns up missing, it's not the responsibility of the landlord to pay for that or reimburse that tenant. We specifically state that the common areas are just that, they are common areas. So if, they, if a person has valuables, they need to lock those valuables away in their specific space. But if your lease doesn't call that out and something comes up missing, well now you've got a whole new problem on your hand and that tenant can say you didn't provide a safe environment. Another area is pest control. Now we inspect our properties regularly for pests, for roaches, for mice, any other things like that that will infest a property. And what we do is, is periodically we'll go in and have the property treated. Now, if in our inspection, we find that the common areas are not being kept clean and all of a sudden rodents are starting to come around, bugs are starting to come around, we will actually charge that back to the tenants. And we specifically state that because if we don't, then the tenants may keep a dirty property, which attracts all sorts of bugs and rodents and infestations. And now that's our responsibility to take care of. You know, and over time, tenants aren't gonna stay in that kind of environment. If they know there's roaches all around, they know that there's mice all around because of an of a unclean area, they're gonna find somewhere else to live. So it's really important that you address the area of pest control in your lease and you let tenants know that it's important that they keep things clean because if they don't, we're gonna clean it up, but we're gonna pass that charge back onto the tenants. Another area that we specifically call out is overnight guest. Now this is a dicey subject when it comes down to rooming houses because if you think about it, if you've got four people living in a rooming house and somebody wants to have an overnight guest, uh, it may be a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or whatever that looks like, there is a common bathroom on that floor. So if they've got an overnight guest and all of a sudden their significant other is going to the bathroom with a robe on or may not have everything on and there, there's a rooming house full of, of males, but now a female is going to take a shower in a common bathroom area, you're opening your property up for harassment, you're opening up for domestic issues, you're opening up for all sorts of trouble when you have overnight guests that are allowed to stay. So we prohibit overnight guests in our properties for that specific reason, because the other tenants may start catcalling, they may start harassing. You never know, it just opens you up for so many additional things. So we prohibit overnight guests in our rooming houses. The last specific area that you really wanna make sure you call out is the number of tenants that can occupy a single room. You'll typically get people to apply, maybe a couple, and they wanna rent a room, you may get a mother with a small child, but a rooming house is really not a place to raise a family. It's really not a place to have you know, parents and children. It's not a place to have spouses or, or you know, someone that's in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship because those couples are gonna get in arguments and 
Everyone else doesn't want to hear that drama. Everyone else doesn't want to be exposed to it. Or you may have a situation where there is a small child present and you really don't want a small child in, an, in a rooming house environment because they're now being raised or being around and exposed to all sorts of other adults. And you don't know what those other adults may be doing. So you don't want to be held liable. The other thing is that we don't like to have couples to live in an individual room because there's going to be domestic issues. There's going to be arguments. There's going to be conflict. And then they're, they're typically going to break up. So when they break up, one, one half of the relationship leaves, the other half stays. Well, you may be the unlucky one to have the, the person that's not able to pay the rent. So now you've got to try to evict that person. So we typically stay away from that altogether and only allow one occupant per room in our room houses. Now, once you've got your lease in place and you, you're ready to move a tenant into the property, it's very important that you go over every single page of that lease. We actually include a, a section on each page where the tenant has to initial that to make sure they understand. My property manager is responsible for going over the lease with the tenant, making sure they understand the content, and then making sure they initial every single page. So that's really important because a tenant can come back and say, well, I didn't understand that. They didn't explain it to me properly, but you wanna make sure that you go over all of those items and they initial them that they truly understand. So I hope these contents are helpful to you as you're developing your lease. As I promised earlier, there is a link to my lease that I use. Feel free to download that. But like I said earlier, it does not constitute legal advice. It's for informational purposes only. I highly encourage you as you download it and begin to make changes to it, get with your lawyer, review it together, make sure that it complies with your local state, your local city uh, requirements for where you live. But again, I wanted to be a free resource to you to help you to build that legacy. Uh, and thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning into the video. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I encourage you to join the Kingdom Legacy Movement where we are building a legacy for our children and our children's children. If you have questions, drop them in the, question, the comment section. I'll answer them. You know, some questions I actually make videos on, so don't hesitate to drop questions. I respond to them. If you want to reach out to me, make sure you do that as well. I am praying for your success. I'm believing God to do some great things in your life. And I actually want to pray with you to close out the video. And also make sure you check out my other videos on rooming houses. I have several videos on my channel, but some specifically for rooming houses. So if you're starting a rooming house business, I've got plenty of resources to help you uh, in terms of finding tenants, in terms of setting up the property, all sorts of resources, absolutely free to help you in that journey. But let's pray because I'm believing God to help you to build that legacy for your children and your children's children. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for those who have watched this video and those Lord, who uh, are taking advantage of this information. I I pray, Father, that it helps them in structuring their business. I pray that they are safeguarded against tenant abuse and also as a landlord that they are providing the proper structure and the proper place for people who want to have a place to live. God, I pray, Father, you build that legacy for our children and our children's children. Help the person who's struggling in their faith. Help the person who's struggling in their finances. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in today. Can't wait to see you again on the next video. God bless.